he's fallen at the first hurdle. Let's begin. Now, of course, for the avoidance of any doubt, and also so YouTube don't lose their collective crap over what I'm about to say, I would just like to point out that I think that any form of rioting is wrong. I mean, no matter what you think or what cause you believe in or anything like that, it does not give people the right to destroy or damage anyone's property or cause violence or whatever. It just does not give you the right to do that. And you'd think, wouldn't you, that everyone would agree with that statement, especially the government and Keir Starmer. I mean, after all, he said, didn't he, that anyone doing damage or whatever would feel the full force of the law. However, if you cast your mind back about three or four years ago, when all the BLM protests or riots or whatever you want to call them were happening, I'm pretty sure he had a different stance, kind of a taking the knee kind of stance. In fact, Angela Rayner did as well, didn't she? And from what I remember, some of these BLM protests went quite far indeed, causing as much damage or violence or whatever as what seems to be going on at the moment. Even the police, from what I remember, just stood by and let Edward Colstorm's statue in Bristol get ripped down by a load of protesters and chucked in the sea. And they just stood by and let it happen, didn't they? And a lot of people saw that as saying something like they didn't want to provoke the crowd or something like that, whilst trying to justify their responses. Good policing. If when, in fact, from what I remember, a load of Labour MPs and people on the left in general are trying to justify the actions of the BLM protests or riots or whatever rather than calling them out for what some of them actually were by causing damage or violence to property or even the police. And in fact, from what I remember, a lot of people tried to paint them as the bad guys rather than the people causing the issues and the protests. So it does seem to be kind of a two-tier police or two-tier Kia, presumably suggesting that one group's actions were justified when the other ones weren't. And in fact, neither of them are justified if any violence was caused. And yes, whilst of course it is right that anyone causing any damage or destruction or whatever do feel the full force of the law, I don't think Keir Starmer did himself any favours at all by seeming to classify as anyone at the protests were far right, when in fact quite a lot of people there weren't causing any damage or destruction or whatever and therefore presumably just wanted to protest about, I'm guessing, the level of immigration in general. But remember, it wasn't just people on the far right, as they put it, that were being thugs, although I'm guessing that's probably slipped the mainstream media's attention. Even the Labour MP, Jess Phillips, appears to paint them as some sort of victims. I mean, just look at this clip. I think, apologies for the language you're hearing, but... I think you can Casey, hear that. Yeah, Casey, I think we... Becky, uh... And, you know, I don't know about you, but to be honest, they didn't kind of look like victims to me. If anything, they seemed kind of tooled up and ready to go themselves, didn't they? Even Liz Trust points this out and says, Astonishing, a Home Office Minister is excusing masked thugs. She must retract this statement and the Prime Minister must urgently commit to protect the safety and freedom of everyone in our country. And that is actually the very good point, isn't it? If you look at the timeline of the riots i mean when did they start from friday apparently well, according to this anyway but you'd think wouldn't you that by riot number three on saturday morning you might be thinking um you know it might be time to call a cobra to actually sort all this out but no of course he waited until monday morning which of course is another few days later and umpteen more riots that had happened in the meantime so i don't think there's any excuse for this did that all the delay that our ballet dancing U-turn Prime Minister seems to be doing, eh? But of course, you know, at the Cooper meter, something good happened. He said, from what I remember, there'd be a standing army of police set up who specifically deal with these sorts of situations. And whilst that's good, doesn't it? It seems like something's being set up and being done about it. Well, isn't that just a rebranding of the riot police? And if so, they've been around for ages, haven't they? What is also quite worrying is that Just Stop Oil and more than likely other eco-idiot groups have basically come out and said that they'll be doing a similar thing in future, which is quite worrying in itself, isn't it? Because they do enough damage and destruction as it is, don't they? Let alone take an inspiration from the few idiots that are causing destruction and violence as it is at the moment, eh? But, you know, don't worry because Labour have come out and said that there'll be enough prisons for everyone who have caused them disruption and damage. Which admittedly is good to hear that the people will be punished for doing such things. However, it does make me wonder where all these free prison cells have just sprung up from. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I remember rightly, I'm sure not so long ago that Labour was saying we're going to have to let everyone out because there's not, not as much free prison cells as what we need. And now, of course, it's completely the opposite. I mean, surely both can't be true, eh? Unless, of course, they've been building prisons overnight. Although, to be honest, that's kind of doubtful, isn't it? It does make me wonder, though, if... The apparent lenient attitude to previous protests in the last few years, such as BLM and eco-idiot protests, that have caused damage in the past, by giving paintings baths and tomato soup or whatever else, 
has led people to think, well, you know, if they can get away with it, we'll do it as well, when in fact, no one should get away with it. Remember, all violence and damage is wrong, and anyone doing it, no matter what their cause, should be punished and feel the full force of the law, not just one group over another. And I personally think that Nigel Farage is right. Parliament should be recalled to debate the issues which have sparked all this off. I mean, whilst I'm not saying they should bow down or whatever, at least people will see a debate has finally happened on the issues. Especially when, remember, Keir Starmer has scrapped the Rwanda policy, which he deemed as a gimmick, whilst not really putting much in its place. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, people do have a right to protest, but that protest must be a peaceful protest, not by destroying anything. And the moment once you go past that, then you are a criminal and must face any consequences of your actions.